If you want £100 off Career Guide's premium lifetime, just use the code FEB100 at checkout. Do you ever find it awkward to do those one-to-one -one meetings with your manager or you're not really sure what to talk about or how you're meant to go about these meetings? Chances are you're not alone, but also you're probably not making the most of these meetings because they can be the easiest way to climb the corporate ladder, increase your base salary and get that next promotion. So listen up because I'm going to talk about these seven tips that you can implement in your next manager meeting. Let's go. First thing you want to do is clarify your priorities and your expectations. You want to make sure you're on the same page as your manager when it comes to your performance and your output, the work that you produce. Simple way to do this is just ask them. Most problems can be solved by asking the questions. Just ask them if they think you're on track with meeting or exceeding expectations on your current projects or workload. If you feel overwhelmed, let them know. It's better to be transparent and manage your workload rather than burning out. If you can prioritize your workload and your career goals with your manager, they're naturally going to be invested and you get buy-in so you're both on the same page this means you both know what's expected of you you both know where you're heading and it just works a lot smoother compared to being with a manager who has no clue about what you're focused on what your workload is like or what your career goals are last thing you want are any awkward surprises so if you don't communicate like this with your manager you don't want to get to the end of the year and then you find out you're underperforming on all metrics because this could have been fixed with simple communication if you're not already make sure you sign up to my free weekly newsletter two issues on Mondays I send out a commercial awareness update so all the finance news that you need to be aware of going on in the week that's coming up and on Thursday I send out a career advice issue so I answer and the community answers a dilemma or a problem that one of the readers is having and then I list out helpful points that might be useful for them so if that's of interest to you sign up using the first link in the video description below with that, let's get back to the video. All right, number two, ask for guidance and input from your manager. If you are struggling with any specific task or project, use the time in the meeting to ask your manager for support or help or to guide you on how best to approach it. Doing this early on in a project is better than leaving it to the last minute where you're gonna create a lot of red flags and potential problems for other employees or your manager. Flagging things early on is better than leaving things to the last minute and so you avoid creating any project related disasters. I know what you're saying, it's all good to ask for support or in general, most of us don't really like to ask for support because we don't like being seen as struggling right simple hack right simple tip ask for support and then when you get that support make sure you do the work but you do it to exceed expectations you basically smash it hit the ball out of the park so you impress them so then the person that receives the work is going to be like all right they needed a bit of support but they produce work that is outstanding rather than producing work that's just average. Simple. By doing this, you're not telling your manager that you're incompetent. You're basically telling them, look, I was a bit stretched, but when I focus on something, I could produce seriously good results. And they'll appreciate that. Number three, you wanna get a better understanding of your role and how it fits into the organization. It's always good to know what's going on in the mind of your manager and senior management. So when you go to these one-to-one -one meetings, Talk to them, ask them, you know, what's on the forefront of the minds of them? What are they thinking about? What's senior management thinking about? Are there any changes or anything coming to the business that might impact your team or the division? Because these things will keep you clued up and they're always good to know. So you know if uh, there's gonna be any adjustments or readjustments to the team, you can start looking at alternative jobs, looking at other opportunities. Also, it's just generally good to know how your day-to-day -day activities play a part in the bigger picture. So how do they fit into the team? What impact do they have? And then how does your team play a bigger part in the broader division? And how does that drive results or generate revenue or help customers, help clients, etc.? When you have that bigger picture thinking and you know where you fit in, it gives your work a bit more meaning and it's always good to be aware of that. And so you can easily find that out by talking to your manager about these things in your one-to-one -one meetings. If you want to break into the world of finance and you want to do it fast then you should check out career guides each of the guides that i've produced consists of 10 plus years of finance and banking knowledge all condensed into 70 to 130 pages per guide if that's of interest to you and you want to speed up the time that it takes to break into the industry and you want to get the knowledge that will set you apart check out careerguides.io with that let's get back to the video. Number four, you want to seek growth opportunities and career advancement. All right, anytime you have a meeting with your manager or any meeting in general, you want to go in with a notepad and pen, iPad and pen, whatever it is, right? You want to be able to take notes, but also you want to go in prepared. If you're ever going into a meeting with someone more senior than you, then it's up to you to be more prepared than them. And you want to go into the meeting, whether it's 30 minutes or 60 minutes with an agenda. So you've got a structured plan of what you want to talk about. If you go in without an agenda, trust me, you're either going to forget something you wanted to talk about. It's going to look a bit unprepared and it's not going to leave a good impression with the person that you're having your meeting with. In terms of your catch-ups with your manager, maybe once a month you can go in with your long-term and your short-term plans. So when I say short-term, three to six month plans in your role and then longer term, six to 12 months, right? We're not talking long, long-term, like five, 10 years because you're in your role 
you're probably going to move in a few years but three to six months for short term and then six to 12 months for long term go through those plans see if they're aligned with your manager see if your manager wants to give you a few other pointers for you to focus on so go in with that it will help you guide the meeting going in with that helps you focus on future opportunities and career advancement which should be a priority for everyone number five get feedback on your performance so typically you might have a mid-year review and you might have an end of year review and so it's always good every few months or every quarter to get a check-in and ask your manager how do they think you're performing what can you do better what needs improvement what are you doing good that way when it comes to your mid-year review and your end of year review there's no major surprises so this goes back to point number one or two i think it was just keeping abreast of how you're performing so that there aren't any awkward surprises later on in the year this one's especially important if you're in a back or middle office role and you want to move to the front office because typically anyone that moves to the front office is exceeding their expectations and a top quartile performer in their back or middle office role so that's very important number six you want to build a relationship end of the day your manager is a human being they have a life outside of work and career right they go home they have hobbies they have family they have friends they do things outside of work ask them on a personal level you know how was your weekend what what you've been up to outside of work you know if you know they've got a particular hobby whether it's cycling or writing i don't know what it might be try and be genuinely interested and build a relationship if your manager is cool with you and you've got a good relationship with them then naturally you're going to have a more enjoyable career and enjoyable time in that role or team because you're kind of like friends rather than if you just have a formal relationship with your manager and you just focus on work trust me that is not going to be as beneficial to you or them as a relationship that is human and friendly and not just work focused so try and build a relationship with your manager where possible and then last but not least number seven offer support time is the most precious resource on the planet especially in the world of work if you can save a senior person time they're going to appreciate you a lot and they might unlock new opportunities for you they might do things that benefit you so try and offer support ask them can you take some time off their plate can you help them with anything you know whatever it might be just try and be helpful offer support say Save them time and you'll be in their good books easy low hanging fruit to pick easy win for you so keep that in mind if you made it through to the end of the video make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you in the next video peace